um, in AMC's poignant and contemplative anthology drama Dispatches from Elsewhere, a group of ordinary people stumble upon a puzzle behind the veil of everyday life. I'm Rob Lucuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby. I'm here with co-star Eve Lindley, who plays Simone. Eve, how would you describe her for someone that's never seen the show before? Um, hmm. I would say Simone is sort of a... Uh... She's sort of like a lot of us today where there is uh, a certain part of you that you are putting to the forefront out in the world and um, it keeps you safe, you know, and then uh, behind closed doors, you're kind of a completely different person and uh, dealing with different struggles. And um, yeah, so I think a lot of her is like this kind of duality of like what what she lets people in on. Yeah. versus um, who she truly is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And we discover that, obviously, as the series um, goes on until the finale. And um, <clears throat> when I first started watching it, I was like, oh, I wonder what um, Jason you know, got this idea of Mark Rubin. And then I realized it was based on an earlier documentary because it's in the credits, and I just never noticed it, about an alternate reality game in San Francisco. Um, so when you signed up, to the project. Um, did you explore what these games are all about or that side of it? Like, because I, I still really have no idea what that kind of means. <laughs> yeah, no, I I didn't know about the game for a while no. that it was a real life thing. Um, and then I met with Jason and he sort of told me and I was like kind of blown away by that, um, yeah. that that could exist in the world uh, it was in san francisco and there's a great documentary on it um called the institute which is a really fun watch um and it's uh it was invented by a man named jeff hull and um yeah i i <laughs> i was really first of all i was jealous that i didn't get to participate but then i was i mean i was really uh really just uh, it's amazing that somebody would create that on their own volition you know yeah and exactly i was slightly jealous i'm like oh there's all these people having all these fun out there and um you know maybe maybe we need to be getting involved in alternate reality games this could be a thing it could be a it, thing it might lighten the mood you know <laughs> And speaking of light, pardon me, we were talking about this offline about how this show, I think, ultimately is about connection, community, and and love, and all those really great things that I think we need more of these days. Um, what are your thoughts on what this show kind of offers to viewers about kind of hope and something that's a bit um positive? Yeah, I think that at the core of this show, it's about four different people from extremely different walks of life um, who've had um, just very, very different paths to get to where they are um, when they all meet. And um, I think, you know, they all, they're all able to respect each other and they're all able to kind of get along. Um, and I think that that is really important right now um, that we listen to each other and we, um, sort of try and do what is right and we help those who are in need um obviously on the show it's much more with much more levity than um than everything that's going on right now across the world but um i do think that it is somehow connected yeah but it totally is because um I keep thinking, you know, the world has become so polarized, not not only, only now, but over the last few years for various reasons, politically, culturally, particularly in the United States, things are so polarized, you're either in one camp or another. And I think what I took out of uh, the show was that, um, was that it's not about you or me, it's kind of about us, it's about we, and I really loved that. It really resonated with me. I'm hoping it resonated with everybody else. But did it resonate with you personally? I mean, you're in it. But what did you think about it personally when you kind of took it all in and you and you were shooting it? Um, I, huh, I, you know, it did. It certainly did resonate with me because I, I'm sort of a person who's on a path to community, but, and I have been my whole life. I'm always sort of looking for the place where I fit and um, and <laughs> trying to squeeze myself into places where I don't fit. Um, but I. It, it, I texted Jason about this recently. I was like, I think I finally understand the show. And it's like all these months later, I'm, I was like, oh, wait, now I get it. Now I get 
you know, Simone's whole arc and all this stuff. So I think when I was making it, I was sort of um, a little bit on autopilot, uh, just sort of thinking about the, the smaller moments that Simone was going through, not thinking about how they all yeah. kind of fit together. Um, mm. and, and as a whole, the whole story, how it, how it sort of loops around and um, the places it goes. So yeah, I, I, I would say it resonates with me for sure. And it's really unexpected because I had no clue that it was going to end in such a meta way. And it just kind of keeps panning out from itself constantly. And, and I kept thinking, where are we going to go with this? And then it ended up with the whole crew um, and uh, Richard E. Grant kind of finishing it off with his beautiful uh, monologue. When you read that script and you figured out what you guys were going to do, what were your reactions to what they were trying to go for? Well, I I knew about this the how it would end before I uh, before I got the script, um, and I think I was one of the only people. Like when I met Jason, I just was like I asked him all the questions I could think of, from like what the soundtrack would be like to like how it would end and what we would be wearing and like all sorts of stuff. Um, and I, uh, I'm really interested in, you know, all the decisions that go into making um, these pieces um, of art. So I, I knew about it and I was really jazzed about it, like the whole time. I, I thought it was cool and exciting and delightfully meta. And, uh, you know, I just, I really believed in, um, in what he was trying to do. Yeah, I, I think it came across really well. I, I, I haven't been able to get it out of my head, so I mean, that's a good thing, I suppose. It can be yeah. a bad thing, but I think in this instance, it's a good thing. Um, it also occurred to me that, like, obviously, you're still kind of at the, towards the beginning of your career. You've got, you know, hopefully decades to come, um, but you've you, you got, you have, but you've got this really great role. You're, you're one of the co-leads, and you're also playing the main character's love interest. Were, were you apprehensive about that? Was it something that you just were super excited to do? How do you feel when you get a role like that and, and you know what you're going to have to do on the show? Um, I, you know, I, that was a bit of a wild card for me. I had never really been asked to, to do that. I was sort of used to, you know, I was sort of going through my, my life and, and playing these little side characters and guest stars and recurring stars and all that stuff. And, um, I don't know. It never really was a thing that I thought I would have to learn how to do, like how to fall in love with someone on camera. So, um, so, and then do all the things that, you know, come along with falling in love with someone on camera. So it was a little nerve wracking and like, you know, there would be certain moments where I would just be like, I don't, like, I don't know how to like kiss for camera. Like, do you cheat out? Do you like, how do you do this? Um, fortunately, Jason has made, you know, a, a bunch of romantic comedies. So he was like, it's easy kid, you know, like, uh, you just sort of do it. And, um, so yeah, it was, you know, it, it was definitely with challenges, but, um, I think a lot of my experience of this entire, uh, experience has been that I always think things are harder than they're going to be. And like, I get a little nervous and I stress out about them and then I get there and it's like, it, it's kind of easy. It's kind of fun and it's kind of not such a big deal. Yeah. That's so interesting. I think a lot of us actually probably have that. Um, <laughs> kind of, yeah. You know, it's like a self-sabotage until you get there and you realize, oh, actually, no, I, I've got this. And, um, yeah. You know, I came across because what I really also loved was that, and, and you've kind of just kind of touched on this, a lot of trans women um, actors play the sidekick, the friend, like but you, you got to play the love interest, the co-lead, and that we don't see that very often. And um, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's nice to just have some diversity in what they're watching. And so if you weren't so apprehensive about necessarily doing it and more excited, when all is said, said and done and you look back now, are you proud of uh, what you've been able to achieve by doing something a bit different and kind of breaking a new ground? Wow. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, um, I, I've seen, hmm, I guess it is, there's something sort of 
groundbreaking about the role, but I never really thought of it that way. Um, I, I, I'm really proud that I like finished a project, you know, and I'm really proud that I was able to um, collaborate on, on moments of it with Jason and, and with my co-stars and all of that. Um, and yeah, I definitely know that if there were roles like Simone when I was growing up, that I would maybe not feel so apprehensive to take them on, you know? Um, yeah. And I, I don't know, it's not lost on me, but I haven't yet really thought of it in 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 those terms, <laughs> if yeah. that makes sense. It does actually make sense because it's, it's a pretty kind of big macro way to look at the whole industry and we don't really have all day to talk about that because it would be taken all day. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. Like, I mean, it's so interesting that you say that if you were growing up, I had seen, um, you know, trans women, trans men, all kinds of different gender fluid people, for example, on your television, it would become more normalized for you as a child. And I just think, well, that's going to be the case for a lot of children now. And that's because we have come a long way in, in representation of all kinds of different people, which is brilliant. But I wonder, have we come far enough or is it never enough? Like what, what are your thoughts if you ever give it much thought on, on representation right now on television? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's, uh, I mean, I think we've come super far. We, I, you know, I'm here doing this with you and that is indicative of like a change in Hollywood. Um, but there's always farther to go. Um, and if it's not, you know, my struggle it's someone else's struggle and you know we're seeing right now with um the black lives matter protests and the lynching of george floyd just how far we actually have to go yeah. um because there is i mean i hope that one day there could be an end in sight but um you know until we reach that utopia where everyone is mm -hmm respected and celebrated for who they are and treated actually equally. Um, there's always going to be more work to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, I think a lot of in, in my case, for example, in the case of a trans person, um, somebody once said to me that Hollywood has the blood of trans people on their hands, which is pretty dramatic, but you know, it's, uh, it, it it makes sense. Um, there's a documentary coming out on Netflix called Disclosure that sort of goes into all of this. Um, and it's fascinating to watch. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I I'm really hopeful for Hollywood. I respect it so much and I love it. And I've always wanted to be a part of it. And I've always wanted to tell stories and, you know, be around the people that I grew up respecting and wanting to be like. But, um, but I think when you love something, you also see the shortcomings of it. And you also like want to dismantle the, the issues that are kind of at play within this industry that I love so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty healthy way to look at it. Cause if you had said, yeah, yeah, we've come far enough. It's all good. We're good now. That would have been insane. But also to say that, no, we've not done enough is probably not necessarily true. So we're in this kind of midway where hopefully things will get better. And I want to see all kinds of people on my TV. I don't want them to all look like me and sound like me. That's so boring. My God, I'd be turning it off straight away. So that's great. <laughs> uh, I was also wondering, um, I, I ask this question a lot to um, actors in particular, because I just think when you do the whole project, do you look back on a particular moment or scene where things started to really come together for you? Like where you just think that was special something happened in the way you performed it or the scene itself with whoever you were doing the scene with where you just will always remember it. Yeah, um, for sure. I think for me, a lot of that, like in, in making the first episode, which is called Peter, um, which mm -hmm. Jason actually directed as well as wrote, it's like the pilot. So um, there's like a moment where for me, I, you know, we we all sit in this diner, me, Andre, Sally, and Jason. And um, that was just a wild moment because I'm there with these legends and I'm, you know, trying to 
trying to blend in, so to speak, <laughs> like just yeah. trying to like look like I belong there. Um, and it was a really, uh, really special night. And then the very next night, um, we were in the same area, just sort of around the corner, and we were filming th this moment where my character is followed by men and then like attacked with a beer bottle, and then she sprays them with mace and runs away. And um, and that night was really the night that I was like, "This is fucking awesome! Like, I want to do this all the time. Like, I there was a stunt involved, and there was like all these different." setups and um all of these people you know like i got to kick this one guy in the balls and he had this like he had this thing in his pants so that it didn't hurt you know but that was like the night <laughs> Sorry, yeah <laughs> um but that was the night where i was like just felt like i was on this like crazy hollywood set you know there was like smoke rising out of the the sewers and and it just i i felt so like alive and so like my adrenaline was like pumping and um those two nights were like very different um in one of them i was like trying to blend in and then in the other one i was like hear me roar so that the combination of all the work i did on the pilot really um really did it for me i think that's so cool i'm so glad you brought that scene up because it just reminded me when i was doing some reading about the show and some other interviews that um some of you you guys have done um i remember jason saying that that scene with the attack uh wasn't about you being a trans person it was about you being a woman and that's because that's what they always cop on the streets um he's so in touch with um the way in which society seems to work he's he's, he's a really smart guy and i because it didn't really occur to me either what were your thoughts on that because that's a different way to look at it yeah well that was actually another one of the times where i realized like a week later like i you know i did the scene and i said the lines and and then like we were on episode two and we were sitting in the fishtown tavern and i was like Oh my God, I just realized that Simone was not targeted as a trans woman. She was targeted as a, as a woman. Um, you know, nobody used any slurs in that way. And, and he was like, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, like, this is like a big deal. And, and he was like, oh, like, okay. You know, it was just, it, there was a lot of moments like that for me where I like, after the fact was like, oh my God, was that? revolutionary or is it just me <laughs> yeah i love that that's, that's why i really do hope that people who haven't seen it will actually catch it catch up with it because it has a lot to offer it has a lot to say and i think it's so important right now everything's so miserable and i'm not and i'm not putting all that stuff down i'm just suggesting that if you want to have a little rest from the apocalypse this might be the one to do it. Um, final question is, uh, you know, I don't know if you read reviews and stuff like that, but you've been called the breakout star of the show. And I would imagine if that was me, I'd be like, oh, I feel bad for everybody else because now they're all kind of like chocolate. Star. But how do you feel about called the breakout star of the show? Because, I mean, I, I thought Simone, the character, was the most memorable too. What, why do you think that is and, and how do you feel about it? Um... I mean, I think, I think people, like you were saying earlier, I think people are really excited by seeing somebody on their screen that they, they didn't expect to see and then finding things in common with somebody who they expected to not have a whole lot in common with. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, I, I don't read reviews and I've like heard through the grapevine some positive things, but also since the show premiered, every time I leave my house, I'm wearing a mask. So I, I'm not like, I'm not getting any info from the world around me. You know what I mean? Like nobody knows. <laughs> so like, I'm, I'm very, uh, I don't know. I'm way out here, uh, you know, in left field or right field, whichever the field is that doesn't, yeah had a lot of play um and i <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i'm just picking i'm picking dandelions in in the fields is is what i'm doing um but yeah but i'm happy i'm excited and i i i love the show and i love all of the characters i think everyone does a really great job and i 
you know, it's, I'm really proud of it. Yeah, as you should be. But and then and thank you so much for your time today. It's been a real pleasure getting your insight in, into a show that I think we need right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Now everyone go to Gold Derby, make a prediction, click subscribe, you know the drill, and then come back and watch all of our contender chats. We have so many of these, it's not even funny, and they're really all excellent.